those of you who don't know me, I'm Christina, Christina Madden, Tim's other half, co-founder of ECU, chief people officer, and mindset coach. I've been doing mindset coaching for executives for about five years, mindset coaching in general, about 10 plus years for um, various companies like Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi, some other names that you guys probably hear. Because with all the tactics and strategies in the world, it's always what's going on up here that's going to really determine your outcomes in this job search, in life, in relationships, and networking. It's always what's what's going on up here, what we're telling ourselves, what we believe. Having confidence in your own abilities, decisions, and judgment. Decisions, that's a big one. Because the most successful people I know, they're able to make decisions quickly. They trust themselves, knowing that even if it doesn't work out or if it was the wrong decision, they just pivot, adapt, make a new decision, but they know that being in indecision or not moving forward is just highly ineffective in getting anything done. So we have to get to a place where we're okay with making decisions. It involves relying on your own intuition, your beliefs, which is why we always talk about thoughts, emotions, actions, and beliefs. And then of course, your values that guide you and your choices and actions. We talk a lot about values and goals here. And you want to use those when you're making decisions, specifically when you're designing your life through your job search. When you trust yourself, you have faith in your capacity to make sound decisions, handle challenges, and pursue your goals relentlessly and un unapologetically. I believe that's where the trust part comes in, just being able to be totally unapologetic, be completely unreasonable, and open to just new um, levels of success. It also means having a sense of self-assurance and self-reliance, knowing that you can rely on yourself and your capabilities. And how many times does Tim talk about trusting yourself um, means really keeping your promises to yourself. So if you're saying you're going to get up and go to the gym, how many times are you not doing it? And then your brain's like, eh, you can't do it. So you really have to keep your promises to yourself and it doesn't have to be the gym. It's, did you get through those networking calls? Did you come to your mindset session today? What actionables lead you to more self-trust knowing that you're showing up? It's about really developing a positive relationship with yourself and cultivating self-confidence. And where does confidence come from? The keeping your promises and having good actions and meeting your goals. Every time you have a goal met, it's like, wow, like I really can do that. Just like I said with the real estate. For those of you that get super overwhelmed, like you're not doing enough, right? High achievers were like so concerned that we're not doing enough. I do a thing at night. It takes me like two minutes. Um, it's aligned with my core values, but to keep me out of a, out of a spiral of feeling like, un listen, this happened. This is everybody. We started to feel unworthy, unheard, unseen, not good enough. I'm not doing enough. I didn't do enough, blah, 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 blah leaves us feeling really crappy, even though most of us on this call are doing a lot. But for some reason, we never feel like the success we want. So I make a quadrant. It's for the next day. And I put, so what I want to focus on, work, family, um, the world, and self-care. So I'll put like, the next day I want to do the gym. I want to do one hour of just super quality time with my son. This is what I want to accomplish at work. There's usually like three things, even though I do a lot more than that. This is just setting me up to be like, okay, if I do this, I'm good. I'm feeling good about my contribution to my family, myself and all that. Uh, and then the world. So maybe it could be so simple, like be kind. Take your kindness to like a next level. So that's a great thing to look at. You want to practice self-compassion. So that means treating yourself with kindness. Those thoughts that come through that are literally beating you up probably saying things you would never say to a, even a perfect stranger, let alone should be saying to yourself, watch that. Set realistic expectations. So achievable goals, break them down. How do you get there and get those under your belt? Keep those promises, the goals and promises. When, when you meet more of those, more positive thoughts are available to you easier. Listen to your intuition. So those gut feelings and instincts, don't ignore those. We want to trust ourselves. Don't ignore those things. You feel like you're in a crappy work environment and you're being taken advantage of, chances are you are. So it's not, we don't have to make that a major ordeal. We don't have to. We usually do. We don't have to just get out of there. You have a plan. Uh, take calculated risks, okay? So get out of your comfort zone. Take a new exercise class. Call a family member you've been meaning to call for a long time. Might be kind of risky if you, <laughs> I, I put that under the risk category because for me, that can get a little risky. 
Practice self-reflection. So set aside time for journaling, meditation, simple quiet moments, one minute. Give it just one minute, quiet. Guys, if we don't spend some quiet time in this very fast-paced world, we don't even know what's happening in our mind. Seek support. I already know you're doing that because you're here. Keep doing that. Celebrate your strengths. Guys, this is highly underestimated. Celebration. Our mentor says the only thing that belongs in any of these conversations are celebration. It's really the only thing that belongs because if we're detached from the negative things and we just know how to pivot and, and navigate those, really honestly, you're just celebrating. I'm celebrating I know how to get out of these crappy situations. I'm celebrating I even have the awareness to get out of them. Some people are stuck in them for 10, 20, 30 years. I recommend guys don't take this community for granted. I made big, big mistakes over the last 10 years where I was like, I'm gonna do this myself. I got this, you know, whatever. And, and honestly, there's just no reason for that when you have amazing people and amazing network. 